Hello, and welcome back to the Animator Guild podcast, season two, where we talk about art, animation production, and creative storytelling. I've made some experimental visuals for this episode, so if you're listening to this on Spotify, consider tuning in to the video version of this on YouTube. Today, I have the privilege of talking with Cole Delaney. He creates video essays on the YouTube channel Animation. It is a great resource for learning about the history and diversity of the medium of animation. I've been sharing his videos with my students and we have found them to be tremendously insightful. So please sit back and enjoy my discussion with Cole Delaney. Well, I I haven't done it yet, but (laughs) (laughs) I want to try and um, animate us. Um, I think that's amazing when you said it. Yeah, <laughs> with I know I didn't respond to the email, oh, but did I was I? like, "Wait, I did." Okay, I can't even remember if I told you or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I did tell you. Okay, cool. Um, I so, think it's a really cool idea. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. How, like, a, I, it's something I'm really intrigued by as well. How to, I know I know we'll get into it, but something like Character Animator, how it's able to map, you know, yeah, um, your the mouth movements to the audio file that sounds amazing yeah i mean i looked at that you know because i've got um creative cloud and i looked at the app yeah. for ages and every time i looked at mm. it i was just like that sounds so lame <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I do not want that and the, the, yeah. you know and i was sort of like but mm. the reason mm. that i was like that is because i didn't have a, pro- a a project that was appropriate for that kind of app that kind of software <laughs> So you just hated it straight away. Yeah, I did. We've yeah, had a, yeah. a turbulent relationship, me and Adobe. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, I love them now. It's it's like... Mm. Yeah, I use I them all know. the time. I, I Like After Effects is what I use a lot. Yeah, I've come around to them because, mm. you know, I think everyone... Like, we... I think I think we have, like, really high expectation for them mm, mm, and mm. but when it comes down to it we all where would we all be without adobe you know? i don't know in, in a call center maybe <laughs> <laughs> something something depressing yeah um yeah i i agree but the thing is like it's really hard to escape them as well you That's know like true. It, it, yeah. yeah it's like it's such a perfect balance of like they give me what i want but they don't really have much competition when it comes to yeah. especially things like after effects like you oh really... yeah there's no real alternatives that i no. can see that i like in the mm-hmm. the compositing space yes but the, yeah. you kind of know that behind like probably behind closed doors they they have those calls where it's like we're going to acquire you or we're going to beat you down as competition <laughs> you know they do that you know? yeah, yeah. which is probably not in the interest of their their users but that's how silicon it's valley just, yeah mm, it's just how it operates it's like um what was it maxon and cinema 4d were integrated into after effects but then cinema 4d had a really uh, there was like an extra add-on called um redshift the rendering mm. engine and then Maxon acquired Redshift, so now it's part of their bundle package together. So it's just like this consuming glob slowly, like you know, in Akira, and <laughs> just just slowly, just just getting its tendrils in everywhere, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's. Uh, uh, should that's we all do I know. video feed, or are you just happy with just audio? Yeah, I'm cool with audio. It 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 it'll ease the bandwidth i have oh, i'm right, recording yeah. my video here anyways um if you want it oh you're recording your video i oh yeah i'm also recording my video so it's well, all good <laughs> i'm gonna look into the lens and pretend that's you okay yeah <laughs> i don't know i th- i feel like there might be some visual information i could um pick up from the video feed but i'm not entirely yeah, cool. sure because like i said yeah. this is just an idea at this point well anything that helps you know it's, yeah it's free for me to press a button and and <laughs> yeah. send it your way yeah yeah so i i have prepared a bunch of questions for you mm. but just know that it's we don't have to follow the questions at all they're more like mm-hmm. a confidence thing for me as well because i feel 
like oh god it's it's animation really it's, wow yeah. I just, no way i feel I, that I way with every channel I well I, I well that makes me feel better because that's exactly how i feel every time you know i i talk to anyone in in a space when it comes to uh animation like when i started i, I have a podcast called animators breakfast Love it. and you know thank you very much and what i tried to do with that is um it, it works on two halves really like one half is it it gets me to meet people which is so useful like it, it gets past that fear of like oh maybe i shouldn't talk to someone or it's a really good networking tool but the second part and the biggest part for me is it gives me because the podcast basically i just talked a bit if, if you listen i'm sure you know but if anyone hasn't heard it and um, where i asked someone just to pick uh, an animated project that that um or an animated work that really inspired them or they think about it in the back of their brain once in a while that goes okay and it helps inform their decision making process mm. and um and that's really good for me because with the animation videos that i make i'm always trying to dig into people's influences mm. so why not just ask them directly i think <laughs> it's create, ingenious yeah. i think it's such an amazing idea because <laughs> the other you. thing i found with it is that animators don't really like to talk about themselves they like to talk mm. they like to direct their energy you know if you give them a compliment they'll be like uh, changing the yeah. subject oh. um, yeah you know. oh shucks thanks but yeah yeah kind of yeah so, i know what you mean so <laughs> thank you I, I actually never thought of it in that way but it's it's a good lure before you get them on the hook yeah you know? but i think it's it's ingenious and now i'm just like damn why didn't i think of that <laughs> <laughs> you can do it you know oh, how about, I'll, I, how about I'll invite you now. on Howard Maybe I will. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to have you on sometime actually I'll ask you now oh that'd be great yeah yeah I'd okay. have to think I'll... about which influence mine would be yeah I'd have Let to think very hard about that but uh oh. yeah you've had some like some rock star animation filmmakers and, and animators in yours I mean James Baxter, what was that yeah, like? Yeah, wow, that was, um, that was the, the hail mary shot <laughs> <laughs> of like, um, I was in Kilkenny. I, I'm really lucky in the fact that Ireland has a really strong animation, um, center. Mm. So there's a lot of studios here that are are, are global units, um, people like Brown Bag or there's Giant Animation, um, Boulder Media. Um, they do a lot of yeah and of course the 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 Big amazing cartoon titan saloon you know Love and it. yeah and the the best thing about cartoon saloon is how accessible they are to just wander down and have a chat to like they they want people to talk to them they have a thing every year called kilkenny animated mm. where you can go down to kilkenny and um, where they're based which is kind of in the southeast of ireland and um and just go to talks and stuff. And they had a talk with James Baxter and I was there and I was talking to Tom Moore and I went up to, to James Baxter and I said, hey, would you like to be on my podcast? And I explained it and he said, sure. And I wow. couldn't believe it. So I got his email address and I sent him an email. Months and months, months went by <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, as, as things do. People are yeah. busy and he said yes he said i'd love to and i'd love to talk about bambi and i was like of course you would uh, you know yeah yeah and that was uh, because it's hard for me then to focus on talking about bambi when you have james baxter you want to talk about <laughs> james baxter <laughs> yeah to him you know but that um, was a fascinating conversation i, I i'll have oh, to really? link that in this video if we talk about it too much but yeah yeah and and also um yeah i and when i was thinking about it i was like and and as he was talking about it i thought of course bambi because yeah <laughs> you know he he's done so much work with like uh on spirits you know working with yes. the with animals yeah. and and emoting mm. animals it made so much sense to and of course he's like he's also like he cares so much about the history of animation mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. he was going to go back to kind of where that whole thing began mm. with with uh with animals yes yeah. you know i've got to say howard as well like 
obviously J- James's animal locomotion is just phenomenal and I think he, he he said that a lot of that came down to spirit like spirit was mm. his Bambi mm. as Bambi was for the nine old men like who worked on it that that propelled them forward and um, beyond where they were before you know yeah, yeah and a lot of Disney stuff in those early days is of course wildly experimental but when they were able to get Bambi right it really set them up to do like the to basically lay the laws of animation as they are, you know, the the rules of animation. But even even your work, Howard, like, um, what was it called again? Wild Fur. Oh, you yeah. Know, the, 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 the animal locomotion in that is so good, oh. I've got to say. I was really, really impressed by that when I saw it. Thank you. Um, wow. That's, yeah. that's amazing that you, that you watched it. <laughs> well, of course, I've seen a few of your stuff, you know. Um, oh. I saw Dance of the Yokai there. Um, when you put it up I was really impressed by that oh, great. Um, and Encounter as well you know like that's that's solid stuff man that's really again like you you think oh hey it's animation but I think hey it's Howard Wimshurst you know <laughs> this guy is he's incredible oh. he's such a good animator oh well thanks um, mm. that'll, that'll keep me going for, for a few years <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, but yeah like and you also had um, Tom Moore as well, who's mm. like, I mean, he's got to be like the name in European feature animation. Like that's the only guy who's who I think of as like a real wow, European yeah. auteur in the space. It, yeah, I'd love to hear more of your opinion on, on Tom, because I mean, when uh, growing up in Ireland, it's it, like we have a bit of uh, an ownership over like the working cartoon saloon with Secret of Kells and, and Song of the Sea yeah. and obviously Wolf Walkers as well but um, like there's a strong ownership of he's just the lad down the road kind of thing and there's Tom and, and he definitely gives that vibe he certainly doesn't he doesn't <laughs> come across as like pretentious in no. in his manner he's very yeah. I mean very very humorous I, I mean that is something I, I think of like as an Irish stereotype but it's definitely true <laughs> yeah. with, with you and and with Tom, oh. <laughs> like in your conversation, I was just, I was kind of giggling along to it because, because you're just cracking jokes all the time. Oh yeah, that was one of my favorite. Uh, I like to laugh, you know, and that's, I'll yeah. try my best to force it out of people. And it's the <laughs> ones where they're not laughing so much. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tom, again, like I've, I've run into Tom a few times. I'm very lucky that. Um, you know, obviously he'd seen my work when I met him and he was and he was very grateful for the video that I did about him and, and Cartoon Saloon. Mm. He, he was talking about it. But every time I meet Tom, it's how do I describe this? The man is so insightful, whereas yeah. he'd say something and I'd and I would think about it like two months later and I still haven't quite worked out what he said. But I know there's more there and there's a lot to it. And it's just it pushes me like one sentence that he says just opens this wor- whirlpool of like thought yeah. that I just fall into and that's just one sentence um, like Tom and, and again like from my experience that he's unbelievably humble he, yeah. he cares so much about the art you know and when like I was lucky I went down and I was talking to them when they were in the middle of Wolf Walkers and Evan as well who was on my my podcast um, Evan McNamara he did a lot of the wolf vision in Wolf Walkers mm. which is like that's crazy sketchy 3D style is that style. like the point of view stuff where they're running through the forest yes. and it's and yeah. it's got that lovely kind of uh, hand drawn like very mm. rough kind of aesthetic I mean they do that a lot in the film don't they where they, they kind of yes they oppose the uh, the clean line aesthetic with the mm. uh, rough line mm. aesthetic yeah and, yeah. and it, that's a really good point what they did was they, I'm so fascinated be, by everyone in Cartoon Saloon because it's never just uh, an animated story. Like as much as I, I'll draw a reference here. As much as I love, you know, Hayao Miyazaki, mm. always, always everything is very realistic mm. for a reason, and it's beautiful and it's so immersive. Um, but with Cartoon Saloon, like they look at art and then put the art in the period of the time and bring the meaning of it in not just the art so with wolfwalkers they'd used um woodblock 
cutouts, you know, like yeah. the, which would have been the um, style at the time that the, you know, the Cromwellian forces would have right. sent back Woodbrock prints to the UK and said, look at these, you know, wild Irish people. So it fit really well, the kind of Puritan view of straightening everything out, yeah. you know, even though things didn't quite fit, like in the film, some of the colors overlap the lines and everything in a, in a woodblocky pattern. Yeah. Um, but then with the sketchy lines, the wild lines of the wildness in Ireland, like Evan, who led the team on that, it's just really incredible work. They they mapped everything in 3D and then drew over it frame by frame in that ah, kind of sketchy see, style. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible amount of work. Yeah, I guess it it's still like blows my mind. Yeah. With that, uh, with that kind of level of research where they actually look mm. at the historical woodblock uh, style mm. at the time, it's mm. like I, I probably would not be aware of what that style might be if mm. I hadn't done the research. But there's this yeah. kind of there's this kind of confidence the artist gets when they have done their research and it comes through in that like it, it, I, I've heard it often said by screenwriters as well that there's mm. like if you've done your research and you know what you're talking about the mm. character while then they're only saying their lines they it will feel like mm. they've got that mm. body of research and information behind them yeah that's yeah. kind of reinforcing everything that they say yeah it it like gives the depth that you want there it's not just you know surface level stuff like i always i always find that especially when when i do anything of my own work like i do mainly motion graphic stuff is if someone looks for it it should be there do you know what right, i mean yeah yeah if 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 they want to find that detail put it in you know so that when they find it they're like you know there it is um a really good example of that recently from what i've seen is is um Pixar's soul mm. in the barber shop. I haven't it's seen very it yet. I've, I've only oh, seen I won't. I won't spoil it. Yeah, <laughs> um, but in the barber shop, there's um, a scene where the, he goes to a barber shop, and in the background, the all the posters and everything are specific music to do with the kind of black cultural music that that barber would listen to. Oh, that's you know good. what I mean? Yeah. So it's an actual, and that, and that's part of the reason from the co-director Ken Powers, who was really into that stuff, who decided we have to put this in here and this in here because that's what would be there. You yeah. Know? Um, and then when people see it, like you or me, I'm not going to understand half the bands because it's very specific to, let's say, cultural um, movements in Queen of that time mm. or Queens. Um, but people who are there and they see that detail, it's there. So it kind of makes the world feel theirs. Yeah, the know? audience will feel it. Yes, exactly. It's like yeah. you can see, I guess in order to understand that, you've got to see pieces that haven't had that kind of care yeah because <laughs> yes. like yeah. i i know that a lot of um tv series and stuff they get they mm. can get criticism when they've been written by older people and it's like when the older when the older writers who might be in their like 50s or 60s yeah write the teenage character and yes. you, then you start <laughs> yeah. to see it come through and you're like this isn't a teenager uh -oh. this is what <laughs> an older person thinks a teenager yes. is this this is oh they think we still listen to s club seven or something oh yeah <laughs> oh we all wear our hats backwards still, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah yeah it's that a it's yeah. that thing you know hey fellow kids kind of yeah you know? yeah oh yeah but uh I, I mean we've been talking about you know other people i feel so rude talking about not yet talking about you and oh, like please. i'm very yeah. curious because you you don't seem to have because i went digging you know i went looking for like a little <laughs> bit of research on who who the man is who, who, who and is it, there wasn't yeah. much i could find maybe i just mm. didn't go deep enough into the research but um yeah like how did you get involved in animation and also you've you've mentioned that you you do the motion graphics so i'm guessing the mm. lovely uh, steam swirly steam on top of the coffee cup was done by crafted by your hand yes yeah <laughs> the, that a uh, yeah most of um how do i begin to answer that question um how did i get involved <laughs> um so i guess in college i studied film and television in my bachelor's and that was very practical and then uh, in the meantime i did some work on tv shows and stuff and then i did I mainly did sound. Sound was what I did. What kind um, of like uh, TV shows? 
nothing too big like kind of smaller Irish shows um, I did work briefly on Game of Thrones the second season very oh. briefly um, because that's shot in Ireland and oh. then um, yes I did a masters in film and TV but in the back of my mind I was always really interested in animated stories like I think it was definitely in college where I started my resurgence of my childhood looking back to animated stuff right and then i wrote my master's thesis on pixar films oh um, really? yeah and paternity in pixar films oh, um yeah. and that was in 2011 so i think maybe toy story 3 was their latest one at that stage right um and i wrote about kind of father figures in in, in pixar and then i was like okay and i was doing bits and pieces in tv but i needed a kind of more stable job so i ended up working for I'm sure you know a TV company called Sky. Yeah. Um, so I ended up working with them for a long time, but I was stuck in the corporate world. Right. And I was really, like Sky was great for two aspects, whereas it made it helped me understand um, large bodies, you know, like mm. large groups of people working together as units, and also really made me understand leadership. Um, when mm. I when I became in a, in a leadership position, I researched that a lot and where I felt areas were lacking and what people were saying about leadership and and like how to gear your mind toward the actual success of a company, you know? Yeah. And um, what, can, can I just touch on that yeah, a bit sorry. more? Like what what are some things that or what is something that maybe surprised you about mm. the nature of working in in a very big corporation like like Sky? Because I, that's something I, I haven't yeah. experienced. Hmm, interesting. Um, I guess it's more like organizations, you, you feel like uh, something so big like Sky, they, they will uh, talk to you about the idea of the family, you know, and, mm. and how important you are. But day to day with your boss, you don't feel that important because you're down very low down the ladder you know mm. and all the accolades go up but it made me really realize that actually the work won't be completed unless it's done by the the frontline staff right so they talk about and i don't i don't want to get too deep into it but my my main idea is that the any business where let's say the technology or the um it's different in animation but where the technology meets the customer demand is usually the front line where like customer service exists mm. and it's there that the reputation is made and upheld. Yeah. Um, and really the job of leadership and management then is to make the people who work in that area feel so comfortable and so secure and so supported that they are so happy coming in doing their job every day and they'll make the customer feel happy then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like a a, 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 a different, re you kind of invert the pyramid, whereas everyone else mm -hmm. is like trying to appease their boss, whereas really it should be the other way around and you get much better um, results from that. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to, uh, again, Tom Moore about the idea of leadership and everything like that and how they develop different cultures. And funny, in his podcast episode, he talked about Adrian Mergeau. Yeah. And... Um, who's an incredible director animator all in his own right but I had to Adrian's pause the episode and, and watch all of his films and oh, oh my yeah. god you know I, yeah. I, I managed to see his, his most recent one because Annecy was online um, this year so all I managed right, to see yeah. his oh, I'm going to shoot myself because I've forgotten the name I can't remember <laughs> the name either I yeah, saw the trailer I, uh, and it looks really oh, nice Spirit of a Place what, it, what is that in French <laughs> Oh no! Um, <laughs> Don't worry, we'll put it up on screen. Yeah, we'll put it up I, on screen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but um, I, I managed to see it, and Tom is totally right. Like the the guy just pushes beyond. You know, he's always four steps ahead of where you think other people are. Um, but it like the good thing about Cartoon Saloon, and this is something that I learned from when I started then working in in different companies in Ireland, is that they have an incredible culture in their company where the people who are kind of developing the ideas and, and working on it have a really good flow and there's a really good trust built amongst the teams. Mm. 
so everyone is doing their best not just because of the reputation of the saloon because you know it's obviously good but it's because they all believe deeply in the vision and they all are very well supported as to how they move forward you know yeah. it's not just a kind of corporate thing of you know we'll get it done yeah would, would and, you say you that that's like one of tom's principal roles is mm -hmm. is making sure that everyone is guided by the same vision i think it needs to be <laughs> from what i understand because europe when you co-produce in europe you have to make sure everyone sees your vision because you're sending it not just to kilkenny it's going to belgium it's going to france for different mm. people to work on different sections you know and um, like even james baxter actually animated a, a shot in in wolf walkers as well yeah. um and you know like everyone has to be on the same page so it's i guess that's a really good tool and being able to help describe your vision which is yeah. a really hard thing to do sometimes i'm sure you know didn't you um what was it what was the the yokai Dance yes the yokai. yokai yeah didn't you do that with students yeah yeah i mean i i was one of the students so we oh, okay. it was a yeah. student film that i Amazing. directed yeah. as a student yeah and it was i think with that it was uh yeah, that was my little, that was my practical lesson in leadership uh, mm. that I, I learned about. And it was, it was interesting because I, I actually co-directed it yes, with uh, yes. Max Alexander. Max Alexander. And yeah. I, it was very fortunate in that I think our personalities complemented each other quite well. So mm -hmm. Max is very kind of, um, he's very good with people. He's very, he's very much like a, a kind of extrovert. Uh, ah, okay. At least, yeah. I mean, he might not describe himself as an extrovert, but he can play mm -hmm. an extrovert, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like he can play it very yes. well if he isn't yeah. one. Um, I don't know what, like deep down, whether he thinks he is, but yeah. <laughs> and, and also we kind of, um, we, it was a collaboration, like even conceptually from the beginning, mm, we mm. would have like the whiteboard, which I, I'm very, I love uh, having like a collaborative whiteboard session. Yeah. And I was Visual kind aids. of, it's like, yes. it was like, I was there at the whiteboard, like writing things mm. down and I would kind of feed off of the other team members and I'd be like, mm, write it. Mm. I'd like write a list of things, like a list of alternatives if we couldn't do yeah. a certain thing. And then I'd write one and I'd just read the expressions in the room. And if they were looking <laughs> like really bored, then I'd, yeah. but if they le lent in, you know, then I would do, then, uh, then I would go down that thing and, and do a brainstorm of that word yeah. and yeah. find more things like it. So, I mean, that was mm. very different to, to just working solo. Yes. And and I well, gotta say I, I loved it and it's one of the things that I don't I don't get that as a as a mm, solo mm, um, mm. you know solo business owner solo yes. uh, film yes. filmmaker. Well, there's no compromise with yourself, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, there isn't, and you have to kind of bring yeah. your work to people and mm. just uh, invite them to tear it to pieces uh, in front of you, and then <laughs> yeah. you know. And wipe the tears away. Yeah, and, cry and, for a few days yeah. and then think about how how you fix it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't be precious about stuff when it comes to other people, you know. That's one hard lesson I had to learn was just don't be precious, you know. Well, yeah, um, there's like, you got to just mentally prepare. I think if you know yeah, yeah. what's coming, yeah. then it's, it's, it's okay. It's like, though, it's like... Um, What's the famous escape artist who who would like take Houdini. a punch in the yeah Houdini like you know when yeah. he would take a punch in the stomach is he could do it because he he knew the punch was coming and could yeah. you know could brace <laughs> yeah. for it but then yeah. when I think the sto that's how the story goes when someone did it just out of nowhere it killed him you know yeah so <laughs> that's kind of what it's what it's like what you know the, like, the ones yeah. that hurt the ones you you're not prepared mm. for. Yeah. The, the real good punch you know? yeah 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 this is the ones out of nowhere what do you think i wasn't ready for that yeah <laughs> no. but it's it's good you bring up the idea of like working with other people because you find then as a leader your role is not to be in charge but to 
take you know to take care of those in your charge and I explore. love that idea yeah, yeah. that you said about and, that's how let's say the management to, mm. the, the managers should not feel like they're on top of yes. the people who yeah. are actually interacting with the customers yes exactly that's a big they, paradigm they should be shift supported. there yeah, I, I came across when I was in Sky, I came across this guy called Simon Sinek and I read all his books uh, yeah. and and hugely influential. Like he did Start With Why and he did things like Leaders Eat Last, which yeah. became one of my mottos and and The Infinite Game. And, and I did all that research and it was really it was so healthy to to like open my mind and try and try and help implement that in in um, where I was working at the time. Um, but at the same time, uh, kind of in the back of my soul, I just knew I, I shouldn't be here for a long time. Like I wasn't creatively doing what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, so I decided that two things, I started drawing again, which I hadn't done for years. And then um, I decided that I'd sit down. I'd, I remember, I'm sure you know the YouTube channel. I just adored. I loved it. It was called Every Frame of Painting. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Every Frame yeah, of Painting. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, <laughs> of course. So I just wrote down everything they were doing great. And um, Captain Christian and the Nerd Rider. And I looked at all these guys mm. and I said, I bet I don't see anyone really doing this stuff with animation. So um, I'm just going to write down six ideas that I have here and I'm going to make those six and I'll be happy, you know. Mm. And it took about three years, but I eventually made not just the six I'd made nine and and I was happy with that then um those six were the Pete Doctor one which was yeah um about the geometry of characters which is definitely the roughest video I've ever made but at the time I thought it was amazing I couldn't <laughs> yeah. tell I couldn't tell if, it, if you say it was rough I yeah oh. I thought it was excellent yeah oh thank you so much <laughs> but it's like I'm sure if you look back in some of your earlier work and you compare it to now you you see the flaws of like oh if I had done this a bit different or yeah. you know if I had the foresight then but then I did the Tom Moore one and each each one had a kind of a focus I was like okay I'll do character design background design yeah let's talk about actual animation then let's talk about what animation can be and I did that with the Asao Takahata video yeah and then I wanted to look at studio aesthetics and I was in between Leica and Ardman and how studios tend to develop a style if there's kind of singular voices on it um, and I ended up doing Ardman and then the last one I did was the Ralph Bakshi one and they were the first six I thought of mm. when I was sitting in Sky so I was doing that and I started making them and then I left Sky and just, oh wow! You're doing that while you were at Sky. Yeah, at the same time. That's why they're so slow. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I left, and I was like, okay, I need to. I don't know enough about actual animation, so I went back to college for a year and did a, a kind of a one-year course on animation. And I ended up on placement then, working for an animation company in Dublin called Piranha Bar and I stayed with them for a bit and then I've just been freelancing since then doing motion graphics and the last job I did was on a TV show a live action one where I was doing the screen graphics in the backgrounds it's like an MI5 kind of thing where you know you have these you know oh, yeah. coding systems <laughs> and stuff in the background all that kind of stuff and so I just take whatever comes along you know and keep would going you, um, mm -hmm. would you be willing to share some of your sketchbook work uh, <laughs> it's very old. I haven't I'd drawn just be that really in about three years. Interested to see it. Yeah, me too. I it's like to you can get a feeling for someone's personality and and their thoughts yeah. when when you see it. I wonder, do I have mine here? I haven't sketched since I've been in this apartment. Um, I'm I'm putting you on the spot here. You can come back yeah. to me about that. Usually, usually what I'll do, and you'll see this in the video, is. I don't actually sketch. I'm, I love writing lists. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you'll see here that like I'm holding this up to the camera right now, but like it's all just written things and the storyboards and stuff in there of all the ideas and everything that I have. I have to use my imagination because I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, you say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're so rough and ready and like they're not like uh, they're more thumbnails than storyboards do you see i um i'll yeah. do yeah. like drawings in in the front of the book and writing in the back <laughs> of the book until they meet in the middle oh amazing that's really cool i like that so you got half and half 
Do you put your sketchbook online? Well, I guess your sketches are there in uh, the animation, really. And you do yeah. a lot of talking while you sketch, don't you? Like, over yeah. There. Well, that's actually. Yeah. It's kind. Of, it's it's. It might look like I'm talking while I sketch, but I actually, you know, time lapse the, the yeah. drawing process and. <laughs> I so hope he's that, so fast. Yeah. I hope there are people out there who are like, "Oh wow, he does it so fast," and they don't realize it's playing at eight hundred percent speed. <laughs> there is guaranteed. There is you know, almost guaranteed. Well, yeah. that's what I used to think when I watched Jazza time lapses. So. Oh, Jazza! Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's, there's. Uh, I'd love to talk to him sometime, but there's, um, there's two guys. Also, I had on my podcast from BAM Animation. Oh yeah, and um, Brent and Max. Like, and I'm so grateful to know them. They're they're two really just smart, interesting guys. But like watching, you know, Brent draw or Max draw is just like, it's just a holy experience. <laughs> they make it look their, easy. Kind of, oh my god, it's yeah. just years of experience. You know. Yeah. Um. But they're really, really cool artists as well. Um, really, really grateful to know them, you know? Yeah, I, I want to talk about... I just want to say, you know, your Isao Takahata video... Oh, thank that you. That kind yeah. of... Uh, that actually changed part of my perception on it. And I think it's actually kind of documented in, in my podcast. Wow. So I was talking with, um, with Zach Sparrow about... Um, I, I was kind of taking the side of like if it's if it's not using animation to oh, yeah. to do it why do it at all you know like yes yeah you know you, you should be using you should be trying to tell a story that can only be told with animation mm, mm. and I was I really did think that and I still kind of have that as a kind of policy for my own work it's like yeah okay it doesn't have to be impossible without animation but it should be very practically difficult to do yes Yes. It, Tom Moore says, make a virtue of the medium, you know, mm, like, yeah. make, like use the medium to, you know, show that only only these specific things. And I do see it in your work, by the way, Howard, I do <laughs> in specifically when it comes to I don't know if you've I, I don't want to say style, but definitely the way that you animate, like it becomes so loose and fluid and, <laughs> and sketchy, especially in some of those like fast whipping motions and. Um, and, and the encounter one where he's skiing down the hill and even the the kind of the ski poles are losing their stability as they're going down <laughs> just for the speed like that is that can only happen in animation you know well i guess that yeah that gets into it on a sort of yeah. smaller level if we look at just yes. the ski poles it's like <laughs> yeah. well that's kind of what the takahata video explained to me is that like oh, okay yeah. so like takahata He'll do like a a film with very realistic characters and realistic setting, like somewhere yeah. the way he's probably visited the location and taken pictures mm. of the houses and then just reconstructed them pretty mm. much uh, one to one. Mm. Uh, but but the but there's there's a little bit of watercolor texture in the background. Yes. Uh, yeah. In in the sky and then yeah. It, but even that is like well actually you can't do that with live action. Yeah just that yeah. small thing by itself yeah and just like the the ski poles you know like you could film someone skiing down a, a mountain but yes. could you make the poles wobble in that particular way mm. Mm. that you can mm. only get really from drawing it at, yes you, at 12 frames per second and having a fresh <laughs> new drawing each time yeah that's not very precise because you know you don't have time because you're you know, <laughs> you've got a deadline <laughs> just very much the case yeah it was like a combination of things like it it helped me in a number of ways because i could say mm. that's my style it's a rough style mm. and it's also faster to work that way than to make everything really neat yeah i think i think when i look at your work it, it, like you can snap and see oh that's howard wimshurst's work you know like it's so recognizable I think it's the the way you use the line actually. I think it's your line work. Um 
combined with the color palettes that you use but i really do definitely think it's it's down to the lines like of course you're talking about speed and deadlines and everything because the turnarounds proportions sometimes kind of come in and out but like i mean it's just to show like it's the flow of everything mm. and that's especially with the yokai one like the flow of the dancing is is more important than a hundred percent accuracy in a turnaround you know what i mean yeah it's, um, it's very close yeah but yeah there's like a hierarchy of importance yes and yeah. like right down at the very bottom of the hierarchy to the point where i probably wouldn't even reach down that that low <laughs> on it is <laughs> oh it's got to be on model yes <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's got to be neat and tidy uh, uh why <laughs> yeah and that's something that uh, um and i'm sure you know him like uh uh, Masaki USA's work mm. you know like it's just an absolute joy to behold yeah they're not yeah, always absolutely. on model you know but it doesn't matter because it just feels amazing to watch you know the way these yeah. things flow my uh one of my biggest influences oh, yeah. from you know from Japan yeah is uh one of his closest collaborators is a, an animator called Shinya Ohira okay yes yeah yeah tell me more and yeah I think he's worked quite a lot with Yuasa and he's kind yeah. of like the mad dog that Yuasa <laughs> lets out of the cage and it's just like do, do, do what you like yeah go Shinya for it Ohira, like <laughs> go be free yeah. and you see it and it's like you know that's a special relationship they have because it's a director who doesn't want to contain the mm. artist uh yes. you know he, yeah. he's he's obviously really excited about drawing this thing but it yeah and that excitement is just like the, the, like the energy that comes across is just mm. staggering mm. it's astounding and, yeah. yeah and and, and you know you doesn't uh try to contain it as a director yes. and that's like that's really important and i think also that they're, they're kind mm. of similar in the in their approach to to drawing which is like yeah we're trying to express something here yeah and we'll yeah. use any tool in our disposal to do that yes yeah mm. i really really like that i love the idea of of you know just it's like opening a cage and and letting letting all the spiders out into their pen and just seeing <laughs> what happens you know and that's yeah a, that's a great way to well it's obviously look the problem with animation is obviously you have to balance the commercial deadlines and everything it's the same with any project versus the kind of creative need to just explore yeah. um like whereas there's always this balance between they're trying to you know they're trying to balance the efficiency versus the the innovation and like the two can't exist in the same room you know yeah. innovation is just not efficient at all it's a messy slow process yeah and that's why i look at something like let's say you know how, how disney or pixar they they go about their story making process which is you know really interesting where it's messy all the way up front they mm. get every all the innovations everything out of the way up front with the story and then it's locked and shoved into the efficient pipeline oh, yeah. Yeah. you know <laughs> and that's it you're just kind of crammed in there and that's that's the end of your end of your day um but it's interesting you know recently on i think it was the mandalorian because mm. people like dave filoni were involved they brought about the animation pipeline into live action um is that where they used like projection projection walls yes like, they used the volume the film set? yes yeah mm, giant led screens with unreal engine running you know the the the, the environments through so it's like and updating in real time depending on where yes. they move the camera Incredible. yes exactly which is wild like but to have all that information ready they need to know what they're shooting first and the only way to do that is through the animation story process of right. mapping everything like out previous exactly everything is previewed so much and they had like five directors that previewed everything mm. so much so that when they're on set on the day everything's locked down ready to go and they just have fun with the actors then and it comes yeah. across you know um like that if if i think about where technology is going especially for live action like the show i just came off of um it was tv live action which is very very fast um mm. if if you need something changed they want it there and then and this is something that you might spend five hours doing the day before 
and now they need a change and you've got 10 minutes and you're oh, just like oh my god I, like... I just wouldn't like that working environment <laughs> yeah it's it, it's not no, don't get me wrong it's not always like that but um when it does happen it is it's like you know laying the train tracks in front of the train basically yeah um every, like that buster Keaton every day sketch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah where he's trying to get the logs off the yeah yeah that one. oh my god that's and that's exactly what it felt like and they're you know 11 12 hour days five days a week and you that's know it's 12 thing. weeks of your time you you're literally in a submarine underwater <sighs> and then you emerge at the end of 12 weeks and see what civilization has done <laughs> how it's moved forward it's hard um, when you're doing that to see mm. like especially if you go through that stressful experience and then you you come out on the other side and mm. you've and it turns out what you've made is really good it's hard to see whether it's <laughs> it's a result of that stressful process yeah. or if it was made in spite of the stressful conditions you know god yeah that's such a good question i i, I don't even know where to, like how i think it could be both you know mm. sorry it was squeezing my bottle shut i think it could be both um like a lot of the time you know, i think i was when i was watching one of the interviews with pete doctor back when i was doing his video um he talks about up and how it just did not work yeah he, he, he was so married to the idea because he wanted to escape <laughs> into the, the, the clouds because he's was such an introvert wild it was like yeah <laughs> really different from where they it's ended up so so different it was like these princes in a house, floating house or something but is that um, the reason he gave that he wanted to escape is that like his subconscious coming through in the pitch yeah wow um, yeah yeah because he had just done he he says it himself that he's an introvert and he didn't realize that as a director all you do is talk to people all day so by the end mm. of the day he wanted to crawl under a desk and just hide wow. so he decided he was like oh it'd be great to escape and that's how he had these ideas of you know up and escaping and everything like i find his work so in tune with the human condition yeah. um, and be, beyond anything else like i i love it i'm gonna do a, a video essay on soul i know you mm. haven't seen it but I, I just need to knock one out because i've been reading a lot of joseph campbell's work he did the hero's you know journey Cam Her hero's Hero journey a yes. thousand faces yes the the monomyth that's all yeah. him yes um and a lot of the stuff that they say in soul is so representative of the human condition that i just need to put them together and write about it you know yeah. put it out there um so that's the next one i want wow. to do but the one i'm actually working on at the moment is one by uh, is about shinichiro watanabe and music i want to talk about music and oh, sound because cool. i've not done those in my essays yet that, that um, would be really good yeah yeah i hope so i've just finished watching nearly all of his shows again and um what a journey you know <laughs> what, a, what a great journey before that was. we get into him just just going back to pete mm. doctor i'm sure you've yes. written a lot about this in your thesis but you know mm. i i heard the well i think i saw in the behind the scenes of monsters inc that they kind of discovered as they were working on Monsters, Inc., they discovered what the film was about, which was yes. about fatherhood. Yes, because he had just That's become a father. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and He said, like, once he was... figured that out, once oh, yeah. they came to that realisation, it all aligned mm. and they knew what they were doing. They knew what to do from there. Yes, and, and it, it's, that, it's a really good age-old question of, like, he loves his job, but he also loves his family. Mm -hmm. so like when the two come into contact you know how they two yeah. meet yeah there's that like whole where, conflict like right from yes. the start in the film of like you know getting the the power from screams from the yes from that's so dark if you think about it children's yeah. screams powers <laughs> the monster's world yeah yeah but it's weak power you know it's not the it's power incredible. of laughter you know is really the true power but um, it's the same with, what was his, oh, was up his second? Up and then inside out. Yes, it's always like the kind of, you know, inside out was all about, he didn't understand what was happening with his teenage, you know, his daughter's mind. Right. What, yeah. What was and going on like in Maybe there? his attempt to try and understand <laughs> it. Yeah. And soul is kind of asking the question of like, where, the, the first of all about, um, 
you know people always talk about their purpose in life and and also you know when babies are born they kind of come out with these fully formed personalities and he's like mm. where does that come from and it just even that you know little little idea like just sitting there you know tapping your leg just thinking which is kind of a, an, a lost art nearly because we're so consumed by media that surrounds us like we're on our phone or our laptops or whatever all the time it's very rare we'd sit in a cafe and just kind of think and that's where all the ideas generate you know mm. um, at least the, the good ones where you just let your mind wander and you just give it that time to be be accessible you know yeah. just kind of reach back there that's why they say it's always in the shower and everything because you're just you're literally just in your mind when you shower you know yeah um, it's like the mm. kind of routine repetitive tasks mm. that you your your body kind of knows how to do it mm. Mm. and so but but you have to like you have to do <laughs> it so it's like yeah. a forced break and it's amazing the kind of ideas we have when we're forced yes. to take a break and like what if we yeah what if we had more i know there are ceos out there who who uh like they dedicate one hour of their day to just thinking yes. and that's all yeah. they'll do during that hour they're not allowed to do anything else they're allowed to just think yeah. i think a lot of people would be kind of tortured by that like, a whole <laughs> hour like yeah, yeah but what am i gonna do during that but hour? It, it's not even just thinking like and that's why again i'll go back to simon Sinek. i mentioned him where he's, he has a whole block of his day blocked off just to do whatever he wants he could go for mm. a swim he could think you know he could maybe you know make food or something it's just it's just time to let the mind work mm. rather than consume it just allows it to kind of click everything into place and think and and kind of you know escape that moment it it's really interesting in in here's here's a it's just i'm going off philosoph philosophical here there's there's a really interesting <laughs> interview <laughs> with Joseph Campbell where he says that youth is always in the state of you know becoming or planning for the future mm. we we always like every decision we tend to make is, is to pay off at some stage later you know it it mm. is like you know this choice now is going to help me in my career or um you know I should put this money aside to get a house right now or you know, maybe if I take this route instead, will I end up where I need to go? And it's always about thinking about ahead. And then he, he said that when he was like 60 or something, he finished work, he retired and he realized he is now not looking toward the future anymore and just living in the present, you know, the present time where he doesn't have to become anything anymore. He's not That's living to... um exist i think i have one of his quotes written down here just from my pete doctor essay but i just found it so fascinating because it's like oh there goes my pen it's like he's so right you know it, it's all these decisions and questions that we make everything that i do with animation or animators breakfast it's always a step forward it's never That's just how to i be. think as well i'm yeah. usually living kind of in the future yes but i think that's yeah. because i have so much to look forward to Wow, that's a nice way to <laughs> think about it. <laughs> I as honestly well. do. Like, I think, um, mm. I, th I think, just based on myself and another person in my yeah. life who, who thinks differently to me, um, one of us thinks yeah. thinks in the fu into the future, which is me. Yeah. And the other one thinks into the past. And I, th I think it might be like oh, you know the phrase "go yeah. to a happy place." Yeah. Yeah. And you know if you're if you think your best days are ahead of you, you might your happy place might be in the future. And yeah. if you think your best days are behind you, your happy place might be in the past. And I mean, it's very sad, but like the person who's very close to me, who who mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who often thinks past tense, like thinks of like a nice thing that happened before. Yeah, yeah. They aren't looking forward to what is going to happen. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of what made me think of that. But I think it's very fortunate that uh, for, um, uh, what's his name, Campbell? Yes. That he, um, you know, that he does think in the present, that's quite, well, that's, that's quite nice. Maybe I'll experience that one day. <laughs> <laughs> I think like there's, there's great moments, like if you've ever gone to, let's say the Alps or something, and you've just kind of sat there 
and yeah. being in awe of the mountains. I think that's in the present, you know, mm. that's being present. And and those kind of moments really snap you like out of your head where if we live in our heads, we're kind of in a world of, you know, non-existent things mm. that haven't happened. Sure, it's fine to plan and everything, but um, it's it's like you can be tortured by the stuff in the past like those arguments where you're like oh if I'd said this you know it would have and then you have the whole argument in your head that went perfectly your way <laughs> that yeah. didn't actually happen and never will <laughs> but you're like oh <laughs> next time I'm going to say this and or you can worry about the future but you're never actually where the existing part of your life is which is now and I think a lot of people where they talk about um, you know the secrets of being happy and being fulfilled at least in research that i've i've kind of understood is like it's all about being open to now mm -hmm. you know and, and being grateful for now um unless you've broken your leg or something that must hurt <laughs> but you know it's that it's just that idea of you know what do you and this is why i really love soul it's like the purpose isn't really a thing you know a, a mm. spoon has a purpose you know a, an employee has a purpose but life in regards to like actually living doesn't have a purpose we we as as kind of entities can assume a purpose and be happy in what we do so long as we're not missing out on the kind of the moments of now you know those eternal moments that you you know maybe had a cup of tea on a train one day and the sun was coming in and you're just like, you've just felt so nice and you're just like, okay, you know, this is, this is a good day. Like being mm. open to experiencing that. And if you're not, it's the same as like, I always find when I decided, okay, I'm going to start doing this stuff with animation. It, it kind of opened me in the sense of it opened doors that were always there, but I just never thought were because I never pursued them. I wasn't aware of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like um, meeting, going up and meeting people or making a video essay or, you know, being wonderfully invited to talk to you, stuff like that. These are, these are all doors that I just would not have opened if I hadn't kind of said, OK, I'm actually going to pursue this and, you know, live that for is that. In, that is, has something to do with being being present and not thinking of like not predicting scenarios that might play out that might not be good i mean i uh, i think i think it needs to be because even when i started this i didn't plan to be here <laughs> you know mm. what i mean I, yeah. like where i am now i had no idea i would be here they always <laughs> say you'll get where you need to go just never how you expect it yeah um, and i think there's great truth in that because again I just did not where I couldn't have pictured myself doing this you know when you write a CV yeah and you like go in for a job interview um, and you write down a CV and you and you lay it all out as <laughs> if you had planned your life yeah, to go yeah. that way you know? yeah. <laughs> but really you you're just it kind sound of like it was all intentional yeah but exactly it really wasn't yeah <laughs> it's not at all and you're just trying to make it look as if it is so they're like oh this guy is you know but really if we embrace that kind of chaotic nature of of you know just stumbling around and 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 you know you can plan things and meet people and talk to them and that takes confidence and it will help you but again there's those random moments and elements of things that you just being open to um yeah you know there, who was a tom moore sorry to ramble on like this was saying uh, in an interview i was watching with him recently that now in in the kind of time that we're in where everything's on you know where everyone's working from home there's a, there's something missing where let's say if you're walking around a studio and you see someone who's you know a production coordinator but they're sketching beautiful sketches you're like oh my god maybe you should do this you know and yeah you help them along whereas you're never going to see that over a, a video call or anything you know and there's it's just coincident coincidental yeah. things like no one bumps into each other online yes. really yeah exactly <laughs> nobody does bump into each other online <laughs> that's a great <laughs> i'm saying it. yeah it's it's absolutely planned and it does it takes the coincidence out of out of life you know and that's uh it's a good good philosophy i like that well done yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I suppose I, I can't. I, I really can't wait until things get back to normal. Mm, mm. But uh, I, I'm hoping that yeah. this isn't the new normal because there is kind yes. of predictions of like whether things will go back to the way they were mm. or, you know, so, like Zoom and, and things are quite alluring because they they are actually practically mm. uh, better and, and you do have less distractions at your desk yeah. at home. And yeah. all businesses <laughs> going to cotton on to that and actually yeah. say, you know what, we're not going to op- open up the, the office Again, we're not mm. going to open up the studio. Mm. We're going to stay mm. like this forever. Mm. Mm. But like, I think it's a kind of. Um, I I think there's more to it than just like how do we increase our profit margins? Yes, absolutely. I think it's yeah. you know. Oh, it's so much more. There's to, like, so much you know, more yeah. to 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 life than that. Do you know it's interesting that um, again I'll talk about Simon Sinek all my ideas are just from better people than me but I (laughs) (laughs) think about it a lot whereas he talks about the kind of four key um, chemicals that make people happy like dopamine oxytocin serotonin and and endorphins they're kind of triggers in the the brain and two of them primarily come from interactions with people oxytocin oxytocin and and serotonin Um, like and and dopamine is great that's like the hit you get from completing a goal you're like great that's good you know or it, it kind of it's like a little reward it's like okay there's an apple eat the apple oh my god i feel amazing and endorphins yeah. are just to mask physical pain but true connection comes from something like oxytocin when you give someone a hug you know yeah um or things like serotonin where let's say if you see someone who you've worked with get an award and you've helped them you feel so proud and they look at you and they feel so proud you know that kind of thing mm. that's serotonin firing and that can only exist in meeting people and you know and being around other people like we're social creatures i think if we all went online it things would just fall apart so quickly um uh, personally i think i think that anyways because again there's no real connection like imagine if you had the whiteboard and it was to a zoom call you know like yeah. how how would you be able to pull out what they're interested in when one person is lagging and another one is disconnected you know yeah. And, yeah, and they yeah. might be the ones that push it but you just or they're a bit delayed you know well, that old it, even classic. if it all went swimmingly it, it's just yeah. not the same it's not no, it's the same not. as being yeah. in the same space like some yes. people as well they have a presence when they walk into a room yes yeah. and, that, and yeah. that's not to say like oh it's like a uh, uh, leadership presence is a bold presence it can be like a very subtle like yeah. feminine presence and yes. that's like that's really nice to appreciate as well it's like yeah. whatever that presence is you, you do kind of use it and you work yeah you, you, you work pull from it. that energy yeah you just you know you suck it up and, and just you know the energy of the room keeps you going absolutely you and know? I, I've noticed that like it's really nice having a conversation with like a couple like mm, uh, someone mm. because they especially if it's a good couple they they'll balance each other out with mm. like two different types of energies like yes. maybe it's like very one of them's very masculine the other's very feminine mm-hmm, and i just mm-hmm. find it like it's really it feels really nice to talk to to people when they do balance each other out and you feel like oh this yeah. is this is really nice and then i've had other times where you you know you go into a room full of lads and it's like <laughs> you know you, it will the totally conversation different. definitely yeah. takes on a completely yeah. different thing where it's yeah. very much leaning towards a kind of a, a certain type of like, yeah, yeah. you know, well, we, we've all kind of experienced that. Yeah, of course. There's the, there's the lads. I know. <laughs> the you lads. Know. <laughs> yeah, Everyone's I don't need to say having, anything else. Having yeah. fun, you know, and it's just, <laughs> it's just amplified f- you know humor i find out with, with the lads. They just want to joke and joke and joke and joke, yeah. you know, and that's that's fine it's, the lads, you know? <laughs> it's all right um, <laughs> yeah. but it, maybe not all the time and maybe well not for look a of business. course of course not yeah of course not but um you're you're totally right like it's you know uh, uh, everyone makes um, a movie you know it's not yeah. just and it's one of the biggest criticisms i have in my videos is like it i prescribe a lot to us auteur theory mm. um I'm trying to pull away from a bit but I can't stop myself because it's easier to just label it with one voice right. than it is to understand Do you mean like that. you'll say like 
Miyazaki came up with this when in fact it was like the background designer's idea yeah yeah uh, generally uh, Miyazaki is different because he he tends to be the only voice in his film and he yeah <laughs> like he's he is very so demanding kind of domineering yeah. in, in yeah his, totally it has authoritarian. To be his way exactly and that's why I love him and like he did a terrible thing to Goro but Goro is now standing up for himself <laughs> I feel so sorry for Goro oh, of course like, yeah that, but... that documentary just I, I mean I'm, honestly that that made me so <laughs> yeah. sad seeing like the character yeah. of of Goro like yeah, in just... his father's footsteps in his shadow yeah. never able to escape yeah. he probably loves animation more than anything yes. else in his life yeah. Yeah. which is such a tragedy that he loves animation like if yeah. he loved anything else he would do amazingly Amazing, at it but his yeah. father is Hayao Miyazaki <laughs> his dad is... how are you meant to make a name for yourself like <laughs> you it's just can't. so tragic yeah you anyway, just sorry, I had, to, I had to get off my chest no it is tragic <laughs> But the cool thing is, like, from interviews that I've seen, it is sad, like, and I see him sitting by himself sometimes, but, you know, the cool thing about Goro is, like, he just does not take high out shit. And that's, because, <laughs> like, you see it in those documentaries where he just comes in and out and he's, like, you know, giving out to him or kind of pushing him for details and Goro just stands flat. He's mm. like, I'm making the decisions here. You know, I'm that's the so director. Good. And... And like I understand what Hayao is trying to say is like tap into my wisdom, but the, mm. the second you do that, he just takes over completely. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a push pull, and that's why I'm really I'd be so interested to see where Goro goes with his films, um, because <clears throat> I think he's he's definitely got the the kind of the weight of Ghibli behind him, mm. but he also like it's hard to get out of me, you know Hayao's shadow, but I really really feel that if anyone could do it it's going to be him you know like he's well, suffered I enough think, i think maybe for him to access his true potential this is just a, a speculation mm -hmm. i honestly yeah. don't know i'm not an expert with with him but like maybe he needs to leave studio ghibli, leave ghibli yeah at, because like right now it's like he's he's being pushed towards creating a ghibli vibe yes and like yeah. people want him to make a ghibli vibe what is the yeah. ghibli vibe it's yeah. it's it's his father's legacy yeah. you know yes, and exactly, like yeah. maybe he yeah. needs to go you know just do something as diverse yeah. as like what yuasa does yeah which is like yeah. a completely different direction which where he can actually stake a name for himself in, yeah with like a completely unique style do you think that's why he kind of grasped 3d and he's trying to go that direction more than i don't know 2d because he's done his last works were on 3d you know the tv show ranja and, and i and, and i haven't seen it i i mainly know yeah. him from you know tales Poppy from earth sea and yeah earth sea yeah um yeah but the last two he did his tv series that was 3d still very ghibli like it's it's um 3d ghibli and then he's doing aya and the witch i think or i and the earwig which right. is fully 3d as well um but yeah i'm so interested to see where he goes with it um, you uh, don't make many uh you you don't draw the line at a certain thing like you you cover 3d animation as much as 2d animation mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. you does that extend to like vr or ar or the effects yeah. like where do you draw the line where you say actually that's not really my thing um hmm that stumped me <laughs> um i think i think subconsciously i draw the line with maybe visual effects in films <laughs> you're though making a, you're making one about sound effects <laughs> yeah and sound um, and music yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry but to call it, you out on that no, just that's, <laughs> that's fair. um but i think yeah i don't like everything everything has its own unique kind of like animation is basically making things move that are not don't usually move you know yeah. so that that to me is is it. like i love vr i have a vr headset here i play with all the time aor i'm super intrigued by um where technology moves that's why i love looking at things like the the you know the volume which is the kind of giant led or lcd screens they have 
mm. um, for things like the Mandalorian and it's going to change production hugely. There's even even in Ireland here, they're building virtual production uh, studios and everything um, just because it allows more freedom. But that's great then for people who work in game gaming industry because it's primarily Unreal Engine. I was mm. talking to one um, character artist who used to work in Pixar and character artists basically take the character design and, and create the 3D mesh. They like build the puppet and they also build the rig underneath the puppet as well, you know, mm. or the model of the puppet. Sorry. And he left Pixar a couple of years ago um, and he said that one day they were all in Pixar and they had a demonstration from people from the Unreal Engine. Because Pixar have their own thing that's really, really advanced. So like um, proprietary software that yeah, other people exactly. can't get. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, they, like, it's called Presto, what they Presto. animate in. And, um, and it's really advanced, like it's really good. But when they saw the Unreal Engine, generally when you, you know, you know yourself what it's like rendering you out something, it mm. takes a while. And specifically like something like Toy Story back in the day, the first one, it took them like 24 hours to render a frame, you know? <sighs> Yeah. and it just takes so long whereas when you get into something like when you look at game design and it's suddenly you're in the world of real time rendering where everything is rendering at the like real time yeah because that's basically what our game you know it must be like a different world i know they're way yeah. more conscious on like the poly count of their mm -hmm. models and stuff they have they they will try and get it as low as possible yeah. while yeah. still maintaining the illusion that it's like a detailed model mm. And they, they kind of map things around you in like a sphere of things mm. rendered, you know, um, but just the ability to like, because if you think about it, like animation is still just in a frame, you know, it's like yeah. nobody is in there turning the camera where you don't want them to look. So that real time rendering really blew, blew their minds. And I think we're kind of starting to get to a crisscross between live action and let's say animation where you can implement things like real-time puppetry of digital characters fully rendered and shot behind someone on a screen you know that mm. you capture them with a real camera it's true photography wow. um and and there's there's like all these people working the the digital puppet at the same time on the screen behind them like that's very close to happening and the and the lines being blurred are are getting smaller and smaller and that's why i like kind of seeing where things are happening specifically with um you know things like i always say the spider verse where they really mapped yeah. you know back toward 2d style but with a 3d or 2d aesthetic with it with, with completely 3d animation and it just works so well they mm. broke the whole system trying to do it but they still <laughs> did it you know yeah um what do you think do you well do you, yeah yeah I, I kind of see it as like splintering you yeah. know the the mm, technology mm. is like mo it's moving forwards in some ways and in other ways it's moving backwards just yeah. paying attention to like wacom which is like probably mm. the market leader mm. in uh graphic tablets yeah and yeah. they're just like you know with our newest product we have five thousand degrees of pressure sensitivity yeah and like our our screen feels more like paper than ever <laughs> Yes. And it's like, you know what else feels the most like paper? <laughs> paper. Paper. Actual it, paper, paper. Actual paper feels yeah. a lot like paper. And, and it you know feels like a pencil. <laughs> yeah. Like they will, you know, drawing on a glass, glass screen will always be slightly inferior to drawing on paper. Yeah. But yeah. they're still trying to, they're using new technology, like state of the art technology yeah. to run backwards in the opposite direction yeah I and so I yeah yeah like that's interesting to me and like the conclusion also one of my students mm, mm. is um really interested in watercolor and wow, is saying yes. like what's the it's like what's the best way to make watercolor animation and i said without a doubt there is a massive jump up in the quality and the the, yeah. the texture you can bring mm. the authenticity if you drop your software altogether, you mm -hmm. go set up a camera rig in your studio and and you buy a big pad of watercolor yeah. paper and you and yeah. you create it manually. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's what Cartoon Saloon did, just looking at their behind the scenes. Yeah, they they 
they do a lot of that stuff like they'll map it on digitally i know they use yeah. tv paint as well to animate the characters yeah tv um, paint of course is is excellent yeah. at it yes because they yeah. they really value that i think yeah. they 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 are not trying to do what tomb boom's doing where mm, tomb boom mm. is like we we're going to give you more widgets more more little um <laughs> tools that are going to help like they're they're just like we want to make this as much like the digital yeah. process tv paint that is yeah and yeah. um and and you see it with adobe as well adobe fresco um and adobe mm, mm. Uh, is it procreate as well it's another one which is like they are they want to get that bleed to be just like yes, the just real like thing, the real thing. Yeah. they want it to bleed just in the same exact way so that interests me mm. because i mean i can say oh yeah set up a, a top-down camera rig in your house and like yes. have a drying rack and like yeah you know you end up yeah. having a lot of stuff that you need you need to download like dragon frame is a stop motion software that's yeah, yeah, yeah. very expensive but very good yeah um and like that's what i want to do i'm, I'm not kidding i want to <laughs> create all of that stuff in my in my house go for it yeah really? and i you... can't wait to do it i don't have the space yet oh I okay <laughs> yet yeah yeah once i get rid of that bed you know <laughs> yeah it's definitely coming you're gonna in. be sleeping on the cold hard floor <laughs> <laughs> beside my watercolors you know <laughs> um you know it's interesting there's a there's a great company in ireland called paper panther um run by basically three people evan mcnamara is one of them and podrick fagan and she's going to kill me right now <laughs> We'll put it up on oh screen. It's fine. No, no, no. I need to get this right. Oh, my God. Why am I drawing up? Carol Freeman, right? Um, she's going to kill me. But <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get Carol on the podcast for a long time. We've always said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But everything keeps getting in the way. Like, we just can't meet up. But she directed this this short film called The Bird and the Whale, mm. which is completely oil painting on glass, frame wow. by frame. It is beautiful. It's Amazing. about this whale that meets this bird at a shipwreck in a cage. Um, but there's something so beautiful at how oil painting captures the color and flow of water. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm sure you could probably catch it online somewhere. It's been out. Yeah, a while I've now. got it up here. Yeah, I think it's probably available on Vimeo. I think the trailer is. So I'll definitely the trailer, look definitely. up the trailer. Yeah, but I, I can't recommend like the stuff that those guys do. They they work a lot in traditional methods, and um, like yeah. Evan does a lot of stop stop motion work. Um, I know Podrig Fagan. They were directing this this is it a feature or short? I think it's a short, um, which is all these kind of paper cut out, um, but black and white in Connemara, you know, um, mm. about this kind of like, um old dog that haunts i can't remember exactly what it's about or what it's called but um paper panther are really like when it comes to traditional methods they are probably one of the most experimental at keeping it uh, alive um that looks great yeah their yeah their work is phenomenal they did a little ad for dulux um like weather shielding paint where it was completely stop motion beautiful little puppets of like you know do you have dulux in the uk do you look uh yeah yeah the, the paint company yeah. yes and you know the dog the famous dog yeah yeah, yeah. the big so they, uh, yeah, long haired like dog yeah <laughs> it's a sheep dog or something i think is it <laughs> i don't know but it's a white and gray dog but they made that in like stop motion and everything and it just looks beautiful oh, cool. and they're so good i know evan did some like eye dance for rick and morty and stuff like that as well um like stop motion but they're really like they their craft is is in that area of like sure they can use digital tools but they're just tools you know mm. to help them like they used like evan used 3d to map out the the wolf vision and wolf walkers but then went and drew it frame by frame with pencil you know and it just again looks really really incredible yeah. and i think you're right in what you're saying like the the digital stuff is moving forward but it's aiming back to make it accessible you know to yeah to where all the craft was kind of born if that makes sense yeah i like that I, and yeah. i also think you you don't you might not need to be at the cutting edge of technology yes because i, I mean i think mm. what they're doing on the mandalorian is is 
amazing innovation. Yes, yeah. Very few people have access to that kind of that kind of equipment and that kind yes, of studio, and yeah, that can make yeah. a lot of independent artists like like people who are yeah. like myself mm -hmm. a bit left out and think, well, you know, we're always told we need to be at the cutting edge yeah. of innovation, but like if you look at the early 3D work from like um, Pixar, you know, yeah. it, it looks very dated yes, by now. You does, know, you, yeah. the, ba the, the really scary baby is an example. Oh my God, in, um, yeah. I can't <laughs> remember what the toy. name of that short toy. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's very dated by now. And, yeah. um, you know, Winsor McKay stuff or, mm, or like, you know, mm. early Disney or, you know, we go back a hundred years and it still looks it's still yeah. got that quality yes. it doesn't look uncanny at all yeah 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 and so it's timeless and timeless yeah i don't really yeah i i think that there's obviously still a demand i mean it's fantastic that companies like dulux are on board with with using yeah. like um oil on glass or oil on acetate as like a medium for them to because I, I mean, when I think about it like that, it's it's perfect for Dulux to to say we want you to use real paint. <laughs> yeah, well, they they use the stop motion. the The short film was real paint, I think. You right. know, <laughs> but that would be cool as well. You might want to get onto them and <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit. Um, but I I agree. I I can't disagree with a single thing you've said there. You know, I I think be that's... like. There's got to be a link somewhere back mm -hmm. to commerce, to 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 business, and like, this is like, it's funny because I think the the real artsy artists, kind of have the they pulled the wool over their eyes and mm -hmm. and they like to see their work in a vacuum where it's just art for art's sake. Yeah, yeah. But I think. Um, I think it's better to embrace the business side of it yeah. and see it as like a whole yeah see it as a whole instead of being opposed to to the to to making it work practically in a business mm. and I think you're kidding yourself if you think that it there is no like so I mean if you name any example I can link it back to to where it, it had to mm to work as a business um yeah. like any film it you know they want to make it a box office success of course yeah if it's not a box office success if they make a if the studio makes a loss mm. uh that's a big deal if yeah. they have two losses in a row they're in trouble if they yes. have three losses yeah. in a row the studio might might go bankrupt yeah. yeah so like they don't have many attempts they don't have many times where they can uh experiment and get it right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i guess like maybe cut them some slack there for some for <laughs> some people not you but like yeah. people who are like and actually me me i need to cut them some slack <laughs> as well <laughs> when i say when i say oh no they're doing another rerun they're doing another sequel yeah, to yeah. to their existing ip yeah um well sometimes that's just what you We're need safe, to, what they yeah. need to do you know and, so. and that kind of like it 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 again it's like everything else it's just like a, it's a double-edged sword of you know if that is the success then people will try to replicate it whereas yeah. really the like and this is true when i read campbell's work it's so true it doesn't matter what the story is really it's all a mono myth whereas mm. people like there's a formula of connection to people and that's yeah. really what you're trying to do is just connect to people and connect to them rather than, you know, um, try and get their cash or anything. And and it's that's why I really think that like Pixar's first 10, 11 films really just knocked it out of the park. It's amazing. Um, and yeah. it's an incredible body of work. Um, and again, it's they like all no all, failures, really. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, not not even and even like the kind of the biggest what people would consider the kind of bigger failures in regards to storytelling like cars are probably their biggest commercial success because mm. kids like even my nieces and nephews <laughs> the cars everywhere opportunities <laughs> yeah it's, i never like they yeah. they knew who lightning mcqueen was before they even knew my name kind of stuff you know <laughs> and and it's just like okay whatever but it just again it just like 
they they understood and it did take time i think it was all that i'm working together to just say this is how we are going to connect with people and um, mm. and and that's really the kind of like we talk about connection again as a, let's say is a theme of this whole conversation is like where when you want to tell a story it's definitely already being told but it's how you surprise people that gets them intrigued but mm. again they want to get where they expect to go but they just want to be surprised along the way and usually it's where you create that connection that surprises them like you know yeah. with with up you know the the whole married life sequence 10 minutes you know yeah. that immediately just grabs you and the rest of the film is so wildly different that people don't mind because they still talk about that first part all the time you know yeah i um, think like pixar they they always seem to have kept story as the the you know the the the, the thing that they do is yeah. story yeah and yeah. like they they're very they seem to be very focused on that and, mm. and reading the book uh creativity inc mm. i'm not sure if you've uh no i've not read it, no, but it oh, I know you it yeah. definitely should you'll yeah. love it um <laughs> it's by ed catmull ed catmull's book yeah and um so he talks about well first of all it's, it's got some of the history of pixar and, and yeah. how it was like ed catmull john lassiter and S steve jobs as like the main founders of, yes. of it and yeah. but also it goes into like how they how the brain of pixar works mm, with mm. um uh brad bird and uh, John Lasseter and uh, Pete Doctor Andrew Stanton, Pete Doctor yeah, yeah, boys, Andrew Stanton, Lee Uncred, yeah. and how they talk and the, the kind of rules for engagement in mm. their uh, discussions because they have heated discussions over the story and things. Yes, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a fantastic read. I, I will. I'll get it. <laughs> I'm I'm excited for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> to read it. Yeah. I'm excited too. Yeah, I'll add it to my. I've got uh, one of my favorite things is just reading books about uh, like you get so much information from books and documentaries that really anything that i think is usually just pulled from something like a lot of people have said and i just kind of smash it together yeah. and um but yeah i'm surprised i don't know how i never read it i've come across it so many times i'm just like oh yeah i must read that but now i <laughs> i must read that oh it's got so yeah. many revelations in it oh wow yeah yeah, yeah. And, and also it's like it's a very privileged of uh, privileged kind of point of view yeah that you can get from the outside uh looking yeah. in a bit like what you have i guess at you know with cartoon saloon and well and with okay. the, the yeah. irish film scene which is quite well i just i just kind of go to like there's so many events or there were where you just meet and talk to people and yeah like it's so open and everyone's really happy for everyone else and so um so connected like it's impossible not to know someone who doesn't know someone else you know um, and yeah. when you when you start in the in the industry but again like a, a cartoon saloon are revered here as much as they are in 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 europe i guess and and in the world really they're very world like they have a following in china and oh really you know, japan and yeah it's <laughs> strange you know i've heard a lot um, of news about the chinese market opening up with films mm, and, and animation mm. but other than that little kind of that sentence of, oh the chinese yeah. market's opening up what does it actually mean what does it entail for for animators for animation yeah. studios or, or just for filmmakers in general i think it means money um is the big thing yay um, yeah like if you think about it, like glenn clean glenn keen not clean my god glenn is clean glenn keen's um, <laughs> um glenn keen's uh over the moon you know is chinese co-production um mm. uh there's another one um okay that's all i've got so far but <laughs> like i've seen uh, i've watched uh, some chinese animated films recently I was f just blown away by the the kind of the depth and detail that they're starting to get into the films. There, there's a long yeah. history of animation in China. There's a good professor of Chinese animation called Daisy Yan Yandu that sometimes I talk to. Um, I'm part of a, a, a society of animation studies that I kind of 
see what they're studying because I like the idea of theory being matched to practical mm. and and that's where I try to like segue my ideas in um, right. Uh, so I, I like to see what the theorists are doing as well as the kind of practical ideas of Definitely. what are happening I think um, I, it would be good for yeah. more like practical <laughs> directors and things to be mm. interested in the theory to see where their animations have context where they yes, where it yeah. ties into the bigger picture yeah, yeah big time um, because again it, it gives that depth of thought to kind of sit back and you know not just have a laugh for laugh's sake mm. you know and but actually figure out you know the the depth of the story like one film that really surprised me recently was um coco you know like mm. when i watched that film i was totally blown away in a way i wasn't expecting you know oh yeah and <clears throat> um, because they completely surprised me every i was just so drawn in that all of the twists and turns of it just completely threw me off guard for when they reveal the actual you know mechanics of the story at the end i was just there sobbing in the in the like <laughs> the cinema and i think it was me and just kids <laughs> it's like a daytime screening and yeah they were looking at me and i was like just stop you know um, you're crying yeah <laughs> you why aren't you crying um and you know that's where i got really reinvested in okay well they're they're doing good stuff but there's um i'm really curious to see where you know animation in china comes comes from you know not just the market opening but also what they're learning then from the stories in in the west and and how they, they can seem apply to have that this, like crazy thing for detail mm, like mm. that i've seen quite a few animated shorts come out of China there's a good um, there's a really good little independent studio called Wolf Smoke Productions yeah tell me um, they made a short called Kung Fu Cooking Girls uh, they made a <laughs> short film called Batman of Shanghai yeah they're as wacky as they sound wow I love it yeah <laughs> yeah Kung Fu Cooking <laughs> Girls and um, You're right but I just head. I was floored by the detail and how they I I can only imagine they're, they're young guys, like from the description of their yeah. studio. I went to Annecy as well and picked up a little uh, leaflet. I went around all the international stores. Oh, amazing, and yeah. they had Wolf Smoke Productions at, at the China stall. Um, not the actual creators, unfortunately, but they had like the leaflets, they had the films showing and stuff. And so I was able to read a little bit from those little leaflets about yeah. who they are. And there's only about three three guys and, and they're... And, two i think two out of the three are, are like their day jobs are as software engineers <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah and, and, and then they make like these incredibly detailed animations like really dynamic animations wow. yeah in their spare time um they, their film was actually playing at annecy their new short film which was like a lot more uh quiet a lot more slow what was it these, called like, oh i can't remember what was it about it was about this kind of it was in this fantasy land yeah with this kind of bounty hunter slash pest control <laughs> guy who um used like wizardry to kind of locate and fight this um this monster that was in this village it was it was wild i think i it saw really that I, I, either i Did saw the trailer it? or maybe i saw it i've a vague recollection of it it's it's beautiful like yeah. the the backgrounds look like i'm not sure yeah. if they are but they look like authentic watercolors with these kind of oh, autumn wow. tones yeah. yeah i mean jaw-droppingly beautiful mm. um mm. i don't know where i was going with this but yeah wolf smoke <laughs> productions is like one out of quite a few examples i saw yeah. uh i think there's another one called like uh something like master jang in the six kingdoms which is looks like it's a trailer for like a bigger thing yeah uh again though it's a short uh okay, there's yeah. also this um there's a fight scene that people keep begging me to to talk about <laughs> which is called um fog hill five fog hill of the five elements i think okay yeah but they're all like okay they, there are some there are some traits that seem to link them. Yeah. They seem to like um, brushwork. Like, okay. uh, interesting. In, yeah. You know, a, a bit like a kind of callback to 
Chinese inking methods. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. On 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 paper and yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, If you look at kanji and the calligraphy, the yeah. way they move the the brush is is a beautiful technique, and they they definitely seem to have kept that yeah. or an, at least an aspect of it. Yeah. And the other thing is detail. They love detail, and they're able. They will go like. I, some of them you just think, oh, they've done like a shading pass. They've done yeah. a detail pass. They've done a lighting pass. Yeah. They didn't need to do all of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they did. But they did it anyway. Yeah. Oh, what was the uh, film I saw from out of China? Um, Big Fish and Begonia. Oh yeah, I saw that. Oh, Big Fish yeah. Begonia. That yeah. was really really cool. Yeah. And I could cool. definitely see some, um, some. Uh, elements of, of Japanese influences. Oh, yeah. A big, um, a big other, Ghibli influence as well. Big you know? Ghibli influence. Yeah. Like, they had this kind of Yubaba-like character. <laughs> yeah, in the... In the <laughs> from uh, Spirited in the Away. Temple. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That was a good film. There was a, it was there really was a, good. Really good a, film. Yeah. A, I saw one called Neja, which is like a, about this... Uh, it's like an old story about this kid who basically is... I don't know how did in the film or the subtitles it was called the demon pill and they're supposed to um, fight this other kid who had like the god pill or something and <laughs> but the the demon pill is the protagonist the kid and like how everyone always you know makes fun of him and he's shunned from society because even though he he's still a human he just has these kind of crazy outbursts because of how he was shunned and it's a really it's a nice beautiful little film of like you know the the negative aspects of bullying and you mm. know judging a book by its cover and all that stuff um it sounded from the pitch a bit like uh, a bit like naruto it, it could no, be yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah it just um, goes to show that there's like well, influences the, from all over the place and again like this is this is the whole thing about the mono myth to bring it back to campbell mm. you find that a lot of cultures have the same mythos all the way through anyways you know and it depends on how they grew up whether if it's primarily a farming culture then they'll have a lot more animal um, and yeah. or sorry land-based mythos or if it's a hunting culture they'll have a lot more uh, you know animal mythos and it's it's interesting oh campbell's work is just like it's like reading humanity you're just yeah. like oh okay um i i know him from for his kind of structuralism things mm. most of all you know the structure of stories and yeah. and that's definitely the prevailing uh that's the prevailing kind of structure of, of western uh western cinema for sure yes. like oh it's big time quite yeah. amazing how how uh you know, if you look at Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, um, well, Star Wars is the big Star one. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars, yeah. I, I mean, and that's one that Lucas directly is very he's very transparent <laughs> about how yeah. much he took from that. Yeah, but for me, just, I, I was yeah. really interested in um, uh, Aristotle and uh, like Aristotle's okay. Poetics, where he looks at um, at um, Greek theatre. Interesting. Yeah. And they they were focused a lot more on tragedy, mm, and there are a few the, filmmakers the who story. are now bringing yeah. that off. And and the the cool thing about that is it's a completely different mm -hmm. structure mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the hero's journey. Yeah, yeah. And and when you see one of these films, it just it's very refreshing because yes, it's, it's different. It's so different. Yeah, yeah. And like one one director I've seen who who really likes Greek tragedy and, and is making films off of that structure is Darren Aronofsky. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that's like and mm. and they're often a lot mm. more dark because they're about a downfall. <laughs> it's like they don't have happy endings <laughs> yeah. typically. Yes, it's not it's not the the optimistic venturing of of the hero's journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and in my own work when I actually mm. think of you know, do you actually is is the hero's journey something you're thinking about or is it something that you think about later once you've already written it and you think oh here's how it fits into it um i think earlier because i didn't really know about it um, <laughs> <laughs> no. right yeah now that i'm aware of it like it's it's i like structure um, yeah i really 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 feel that structure is the best way like it's the best communicator because you're you're puncturing things at the right moment to 
you know, lead people on and then give them a break when they need it. So mm, if you yeah. pre pre structure things out, it it definitely helps. And if there's already guiding structures in place, you know, um, what's the old adage? Learn the rules before you break them, kind of thing. Yeah. And um, so I'm I'm a big structure boy. Like all my video essays, I follow the same structure all the time, which is like introduction then I make point one, point two, point three, and then conclusion or whatever. Mm. But inside each one of those points is like broken down again into a structure. So it's very easy to write them. What yeah. I do is I'll just research and research and research for ages, like months. And I'll write everything I'd, I'd like quotes from videos that I think are interesting and um, that kind of redirect my point of view or, you know, from if I've watched something, I'll write the timestamp of you know whatever the the clip was that kind of illustrates it and then i'll take all that i'll write a structure and i'll just slam everything in from point mm. to point to point and then i'll just refine it and then i record the voiceover and then i start yeah. editing <laughs> and then and then when i edit i think to myself why why oh why didn't i structure this better <laughs> you know because <laughs> i'm struggling to put a clip in it to like punctuate my point that I don't use one that has a better point later on and I'm like oh God, why and it's just torture trying to get from one point to the bit that I have planned and it's just a nightmare but I, I think yeah again if I'm writing That's stuff like I like though. structure I, I, yeah. I do the same thing <laughs> <laughs> with with essays that is like yeah <laughs> that's how i was taught in school yes exactly uh, to, yeah to write an essay and i yeah. took that same structure yeah and brought it to, to video and that's i guess that's why they're called video essays Ex exactly but then again when i see something like uh you know your yokai one like that has such a beautiful flow well, like different. what was the structure that's that? a film yeah well you know i got a youtube videos and i got films yes <laughs> but but what's the like did you have a structure starting that or what was the yeah um but what i what i want to be clear is that mm -hmm. some of the structures that later on i i kind of retrospectively mm -hmm. think oh yeah like that that does make sense and it's they're good tools for like learning about yes. story yes it does, it's different to the tools you might use to actually write the story yes yeah and so the tools that i use to write the story there's um oh what's the guy's name he's another structuralist writer i think he's from like russia mm -hmm. but he he gave the simplest one ever which i use a lot which is about equilibrium so you start Perfect. in the state yeah. of equilibrium something upsets the balance and yeah. then the characters have to work to bring balance back yes but like yeah. the the balance they might have at the end of the film might be different to what they had at the start but it will mm -hmm. still be balanced yes yeah still on the beam yeah 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 and so i i like that one and i also like um so with dance of the yokai that was definitely a, a tragedy Mm -hmm. uh, structure mm -hmm. and there are certain there are only a few r things you really need w to make it a tragedy um, and you can you can just look at things like Titanic as an example of, of like how that is and and one of them is like inevitability yes um, it was ver it's very yeah. important yeah. to to get that catharsis it was it's mm -hmm. very important that it was never going to work there was never a possible time in that when it was going to work because of the lesson you're going to learn yes <laughs> um yeah. so that that is like an important thing and also like st starting off good having a great time and then and then and then it comes down mm -hmm. and that's i mean we, we were earlier we were linking like inner thoughts to to the story yeah um, that we're trying to tell and like everyone's story everyone's personal story ends in death sorry yes, to break true. the spoiler yeah. yeah but that's what happens and that's why it's <laughs> sorry, very everyone. yeah yeah that's like why i think tragedy works very well it's because it is something we can all relate to and so it's something that's that embodies life quite well yeah it, it's, yeah it's yeah and it's more like a tragedy of death is not your own but it's like everyone else around you you know so it's like um how do you show that perspective then you know yeah. if 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 the death is the tragedy then it can't be 
can it be the main characters who know but it's yeah. like how how does that affect everyone else's um <clears throat> which is the opposite of some things and again like something like up or big hero six that starts in tragedy and it's about getting past exactly. that exactly yeah yeah and one uh, of my favorite films that that has the op- it's just the inverse really mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is um the pursuit of happiness yes yeah 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 and that that's like oh yeah he starts in a desperate place yeah and he yeah. claws his way up through sheer <laughs> strength of will yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. to 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 happiness to where, to where he wants to be in life mm-hmm. which is for him it's as a i don't know what it is hedge fund manager or, or something like that I mean, yeah for, i can't it can remember be different what, for anyone <laughs> yeah, what did he want to do in the end Just... i think he was like a stockbroker something something in finance or like no something so yeah something in investing yes yeah uh, um but he he did incredibly well for himself but like and and maybe that's not what i want to do mm-hmm. but i can take that the story yes and i can apply it to to my own yeah. life and say well he did this when when he was at this part so i'll do this and and as well take that story nugget and put it in your little back of your brain to yeah. think of the next time you're writing a story it's like that was a really interesting way of thinking about something you yeah know, where did it surprise me and how can i add those elements then into my stories you know yeah um the this the short story format is different from yeah. a feature yeah. format that you've got less time to yes. mess about yeah, with yeah, things yeah. in in the short story you can't have b plot lines and things no. just <laughs> the great to the chase. Yeah, yeah yeah and so it's kind of like it's, it follows more of a joke format, which is like set up, yes. punch line, yeah. get out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exit the stage. As yeah. soon as you said your punch line, you, you cut to the credits and then it's over. <laughs> which suits me. I mean, it's yeah. very efficient. Yeah. Efficient, <laughs> yeah. efficient, efficiency and innovation. You know, it's all the back in a circle. But um, yeah. that's why I like people like Python, where they just, you know, sometimes didn't even have a punch line. And yeah. I think that's fantastic. Like just a big setup and then nothing. <laughs> and that is the punchline, you know? Yeah. That, that's I mean, a they, good structure. They can. I, I think that's, you run the risk. Yeah. When you do that. You, you really run the risk of having, of, of annoying everyone and feeling yeah. like they wasted their time. I'm, I'm, uh, even if it's like a free film online that no one, that you don't have to yeah, pay for, yeah, people invest their time. They have to give their yes. time for it. So, yeah they want to be rewarded yes yeah 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 that's that's a really interesting way of thinking about people consuming stories a reward yeah and it's just like i think <clears throat> when i think about stories as well it's just it's just about honesty isn't it really like that the connection of and the yeah. honesty even even so even much if it's, of it is yeah. honesty and that's what creates the connection it's just being honest about you know imparting your experiences into or your emotions into what's what's happening with the characters and everything um and that's where the connection is created really um and i think that it's where that you know it's it's where things aren't honest where it just feels like a bit of um i'm stumbling around a term here but it just feels like a bit of a nothing it feels like you're being deceived yeah yeah you're just kind of like mm. um just for the sake of making it look good or you know getting character a to point b without it feeling honest you again yeah. like you said you just feel deceived you know there's no there's no at, at the end if you think about the reward there's no joy in that experience people crave honesty yes for yeah. some reason they just <laughs> when they get a bit of honesty like come across they're just like oh well it's the reflection isn't it like it's the it's the masking thing and it's part of the reason why scott mcleod talks about it the the masking effect where it's like you know you make your main character either you know very plain or just you know so Mm -hmm. identifiable that you can be in their shoes yeah they're like an avatar for you to explore through exactly and that's why the villains are so wildly stylized and different because you could never be that you know that's that's not what you're going to be that's your opposition whereas look don't worry you're the hercules don't worry about it you know whereas hades um who is amazing again is just not 
you. It's someone you might come across in your life, but it's not you, you know? It's like those kind of people who would be, they'd be awful for you to have in, in your life, <laughs> but you kind of want to watch yeah. them from a distance and oh, see yeah. what they what happens, you know? They, you want to see yeah. what they do, but just from a safe distance through the screen, you know, with a screen separating <laughs> you. Yeah, in a dark room, you know? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But the older I get, the more the villains are my favorite, you know, definitely. Oh, definitely. Big they, time. They're packed full of character. Oh, and you can yeah. see it with like, yeah, with uh, Hades is yes. one of my favorite villains uh, <laughs> in animation. And, and <laughs> you know, he's just, uh, you can tell the animators just had a great time. Oh, a phenomenal time. You know, it's like the genie and, and hats off to Disney. You know, they're, they're, you know the animation process they go through and dreamworks is, is 2d stuff just phenomenal you know really yeah. really phenomenal work um and that's obviously they bred people like james baxter through who mm. who has continued their work um yeah that's all <laughs> that's, uh, I'll stop we have now. gone we've been going for quite a while uh, yes are you uh i'm gonna oh, have to go think, soon i think yeah because, i think uh, we, we better um, yeah <laughs> we better wrap this up but, my, my partner's uh, gonna be home soon and she will expect, oh okay yeah, um, well i mean I, i'm probably gonna go away thinking about this tonight and be like oh why didn't i ask him this oh no i lost my opportunity <laughs> we, we, no not at all when i get you on my podcast you can ask me how about oh, that yeah, yeah yeah okay okay yeah. that's that that's good then okay <laughs> yeah. i i won't be up at night then I mean, like no we've got this we've got we this have it next we're time. locked down yeah yeah all right and you're going to show me how it's actually done how you're actually meant to host a podcast oh, when please you know. when we do yours <laughs> you, you, what I'll i do in my so podcast is um i will record myself sounding really cool and better later and edit it <laughs> no i don't that's do fair that. enough yeah, yeah no i don't no, i don't um, as long as you don't do the opposite for me <laughs> it's fine <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll just cut you being like, a, uh, 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 God, I can't get an answer out of this guy at all. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. But and look, Howard, I, thank you so much, first of all, reaching out and, and talking to me. I really, really appreciate it. It's it's thank a huge so honor to talk to you. Thank you for giving us your time. You know, oh, you're very welcome. Listen, it is there to be given. Um, and yeah, and and also, if you're listening to this, please go and watch Animation. It's A N Y hyphen mation right yeah, that's it <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> but listen thank you so much howard i'll thank stop you. recording here thank, thank you. you so much all right take care